Hello everybody, Nitsa Gamer here, back for some more Persona 5 Royal, a game where you play as a hot protagonist who is both gutsy, proficient, knowledgeable, kind, and charming. All social quirks that no average teenager would have all at once. So what if Joker was as socially realistic as possible? Can you beat Persona 5 Royal without raising Joker's social stats? On Merciless. I think the obvious answer to this question is yes, but let's not jump to conclusions just yet, as we will be faced with a lot of limitations during this run. Now thankfully, we do have the numbers of how many points are required per social stat. These are the points required to rank up a social stat, so as long as we stay under these numbers, we will be good. However, it should be noted that the notes displayed does not equal the amount of points that are received. In fact, three notes could either mean we've gained 5, 7, or 10 points. This means we will have almost no way of tracking where we are in progressing a social stat. We just gotta get lucky that it doesn't increase during the run, and if all this sounds confusing, I recommend checking out Roslyn's video on how to max out your social stats and how many points each activity can give you. This video will be a great reference material to help us make this run possible. The rules are as follows. We are allowed to gain a social stat note as long as we never upgrade that social stat to level 2. We must play the entire run on Merciless difficulty to reflect how hard real life is. We must get the true ending with the third semester included. No DLC personas are allowed, which will be simple since I haven't downloaded any DLC for this game. I mean, seriously, DLC just for costumes? No. And we will level up as many ranks as possible just to show this run's limitation. So without further ado, let's play with an oblivious, milquetoast, bumbling, inoffensive, existing Joker and do it as socially insecure as possible. We start the run by agreeing to a contract without talking to our lawyer about it, and doing so has Joker beaten up by the men in black. Hey, it could be worse. Joker would pick the hardest difficulty like a badass despite enduring so much torture, and then he immediately regrets that decision when he remembers why he's in this situation to begin with. Apparently, Joker tried to stand up to domestic violence, but he gets arrested and therefore loses all of his guts and proficiency thanks to this event. Sometimes PTSD doesn't go away and this playthrough will be proof of that. Anyway, you know how the begin goes. Joker awakens to his persona, we meet Teddy's pet cat, Morgana. I am not a cat! Say that again and I'll make you regret it! And the next day, Ryuji awakens to his persona, we get rank 1 under the Cherry Arcana, Shiho fails the diving competition, and we take the blame on Kamoshida for being a horrible swimming teacher. And An joins us because being a visual ante is more fun than doing homework. Now actually, before we rescue On during our third visit to the castle, the one thing I recommend trying is to capture as many personas as possible. Or at least I would, but it's actually impossible on Merciless. With the exception of Pixie, because tutorial, trying to exploit any persona's weakness or hitting them with a technical or critical will actually do three times the amount of damage. This is implemented in Merciless as a double-edged sword, making it easy for party members to die in one hit, but also efficient for you to kill enemies faster. But in actuality, this hinders us from being able to negotiate with shadows. Because of that, we cannot obtain a single persona aside from Pixie during the tutorial. So we are stuck with Arsene and Pixie for the rest of the day, only to end up fusing them later. But in the meantime, we spend the time grinding out in the first room before rescuing on. Usually when you go to the safe room and come back out, the enemies you fought will be gone. However, if you save in the safe room, then load your file, this will place the enemies back in the first room. So you could easily gun them down, save, reload, and repeat. I recommend doing this so you can level up sooner. This will help with the progression of Kamoshida's palace and give the guys a head start on their hit points and spirit points when we do our one day infiltration route. So once I get the boys up to level 7, we go and save On, shit on the shitter who one hit killed Ryuji with wind, get rank 1 with On and Morgana of the Lovers and Magician Arcana, steal Ryuji's money and buy absolutely nothing from the airsoft shop, buy nothing from Takemi despite begging her to give us the drugs, 
piss off our social studies teacher twice in a row, and Morgana gives us our tutorial on crafting infiltration tools, in which we will get one lockpick. This will give us two notes in proficiency, which means we will have three points in proficiency. So if we get another nine more, the challenge will fail. So we will only craft infiltration tools at least one more time later in the run. But for the time being, this means we will be locked out of most of the lock chests in the game. Anyway, once it's the 18th, we buy all the SP drinks from three different vending machines, and then start the Death Arcana with rank 1. And we will gain two points in Guts, which is okay since Takemi is the only confidant that gives us Guts. However, in order to start rank 2 of Takemi's confidant, we are required to have level 2 Guts. So I can confirm that it will not be possible for us to max out Tai Takemi of the Death Arcana, as we will be stuck with rank 1 and only one perk for the rest of the run. I then pick up some items and 50,000 yen from our cardboard box since I own a save of Persona 5 Vanilla. We clean up our room, which is a little out of character with someone who is supposed to be socially insecure, but it gives us no social stat increases, so why not? We buy some protein from the discount store while ignoring our client's needs. Realize that working part-time jobs are for people who want a social life, ironically, as the jobs gives us social stat points. And then we spend some time with Ryuji to get rank 2. Since the first week of Kamoshida's Palace restricts us inside the cafe, most of the activities end up giving us social stats, so the best way to pass time is by doing training in our room. While here, I recommend saving any imported or moist protein and instead only use the regular protein as we will be using the better stuff at the gym when we eventually unlock it. Speaking of protein, whenever there's a rainy day like on the 20th, this is a great opportunity to go to the sports shop as rainy days offer moist protein. Moist protein offers greater effects on your training than regular protein, so it's best to come here every rainy day for moist protein. Now, since there's no confidants on the 20th, we will use this day to infiltrate Kamoshida's palace. While buying your gear at the airsoft, I highly recommend buying protectors and ranged weapons over melee weapons, since guns will be the most efficient when grinding out levels. And once we go to Kamoshida's palace, we are forced to sacrifice two of our personas with no way out of the tutorial. And then, Kamoshida's palace begins. Now since we have On with us, grinding out in the first room again will be more efficient, and we can reobtain Pixie without negotiation since the weakness does not instantly kill Pixie. And once you reach the second safe room, you can find a locked treasure chest. There are three locked treasure chests in total, so we will need to decide which one is best to open. The first is an armor for males, the second is a whip for On, which is really only 6 attacks better than the current whip we're using, and the third chest is a bead which does full HP recovery to one ally. Since the armor and whip may only be used in this palace, I decided to go with the bead as that can be used almost any time. And once we go beyond the second safe room, we have to deal with enemies either the same level as us or stronger than us. But thankfully, there's a really stupid easy way of fighting these enemies. By not fighting them at all. By simply going into hiding mode and sneaking around them, we can avoid most of these encounters and conserve our HP and SP unless we absolutely need to grind. Sadly, we still can't obtain any personas as their weakness is an insta-kill, but thankfully, there's actually a more easier solution. This battle in particular is scripted to make Pyrojack beg for his life. This will not only give us Pyrojack as a persona, but it will also give us the ability to make enemies beg. By using our gun attacks, we can lower the enemy's health just enough with a good chance for it to beg for its life. If it does this, we have an even better solution of gaining personas without needing to answer questions if we had exploited the weaknesses. Once we get a full stock, we're going to need to fuse Saki Mitama, a lover's persona with a growth one skill that can grant a persona a quarter of experience if not used in battle. So from here, we just fuse personas with the growth one skill and we can give most of our personas this useful ability to decrease the amount of grinding required for better stats and skills. And then once we reach the chapel, we discover hell. 
The guard captain can tank charged up cleaves with a good chance of instantly killing your party members even if they are guarded. So before we face up against the guard captain, we need to grind Joker till he reaches level 10. To do this faster, I actually recommend going after the strong shadows in the east third floor building. Burrith will nullify gun attacks, but he's weak to ice and can be put to sleep by On for technical damage. From here, you just melee attack with Morgana and Ryuji, use ice attacks as Joker, put Burrith to sleep with On, and get technical damage when asleep with a possible chance of downing the enemy. Because the damage is tripled when causing technical damage or exploring the weakness, this can actually level you up faster. And the reason we need to get to level 10 is to fuse our best persona for the fight against Kamashita, Slime. Slime will resist physical attacks and give us Taruna to decrease attacks, making the boss fight against Kamashita easier. With Slime in my soul, we fight up against the guard captain, and this actually went a lot better than expected. The guard captain did not even hit Joker once, and I got through the fight pretty easily that I had to question whether or not I was even on Merciless difficulty, which I can assure you, I am, so I'm not cheating. And from here, it's pretty straightforward. Find the will seeds, get the bead from the locked chest, find Kamashita's eyes, secure our infiltration route to the treasure, and I'm not gonna lie, doing a one day infiltration route on Merciless went a lot easier than I was expecting. So from here, I just do a little bit of grinding on Birth and Angels. I pack up and head home for the night, where I eventually dream about Takemi and I doing a prostate exam together. We send the calling card, the fight against Kamashita can get pretty brutal, but thankfully with Joker having slime, we have a good chance at this fight. Once you get to the part where you go for the crown, however, this is where Merciless makes things difficult for us. While someone goes for the crown, you need to do enough damage on Kamashita to keep him distracted. However, since you only do 65% of damage than you would on normal difficulty, going for the crown is not a possible strategy unless you grind to an insane level. So on Merciless, you're better off just keeping all four party members in your group and fighting Kamashita while he still has the crown on him. It will take a while, but it's definitely the most efficient way. So once he's down, on can burn him alive, killing Kamashita, and we will spend the remaining days bonding with confidants. And by bonding with confidants, I mean only bonding with Ryuji. Takemi is out of the question, and Sejiro is too risky. Bonding with Sejiro will raise Joker's kindness with every interaction. Now, you might be saying, why not just bond with him so you can make coffee for free SP? Well, that is because in the Royal version, you gain 2 points in charm, which may I remind you, has the lowest threshold. Bonding with Sejiro is just a bad idea. So you're better off training in your room with protein, being bad with our money like Yusuke is, ignoring Sejiro wanting to talk to us, and spending time with Ryuji during the day. And since most activities during the day increases our social stats, you're better off just going straight to LeBlanc for the night if Ryuji is unavailable. And since you have no school or confidants to bond with on the 24th, you can train twice in your room during the daytime. One moment that had me worried though was April 25th. On this day, we need to help On answer a class question which will increase our bond with her and give us 2 points in charm. At first, I thought this was mandatory as the game was letting me retry answers, but apparently if you answer wrongly 3 times, Kawakami will acknowledge that On is taken so long. So thank god we were able to embarrass On in front of the whole class. That is less severe than us increasing our charm. And this also applies to the class questions when Morgana helps you for a knowledge stat. If you choose the wrong dialogue option 4 times, the teacher will acknowledge you taken so long to answer. This is karma for us not helping on, but a blessing in disguise for this run. Once we get 4 ranks with Ryuji, rank 5 will be unavailable until after Kamoshida's fallout, and during the home shopping program on May 1st, we can buy ourselves a muscle workout set which will give us 2 things of protein and a moist protein. 
Once it's the deadline, we hear about the tragic burn-in of Kamoshida, the Gossip Girls apologizes to Aunt, but really they're just apologizing for being wrong and not for the fact that they invaded her personal life. We sell the medal for some money, celebrate with the homies on a successful homicide, and since Joker is too socially incapable of coming up with names, we just go with Aunt's suggestion. Hey everyone, shameless plug here, but if you're enjoying this video, be sure to give it a like, comment, and subscribe, and ding the bell to anticipate part 2 of this run. So yeah, I hope you guys are all enjoying this. So are you ready for Madarame's arc? Alright, let's begin Madarame's arc. On May 5th, we gain our first mandatory knowledge stat, which means we're at 2 points in knowledge. Afterwards, Mishima breathes in my face to tell me that he's going to give me rank 1 of the Moon Arcana. After school, we talk to On, but despite being her best friend at this point, Joker requires level 2 kindness to even start her second rank. Morgana rightfully calls me pathetic, rubbing salt in the wound as this means we cannot progress On's confidant past rank 1. And we don't get any abilities from her, which sucks a lot. With me no longer in the way of Morgana getting on for himself, we start Ryuji's 5th rank where we finally unlock the gym. The Protein Lovers will be the number one place we will be going to when we have no confidants to spend time with, day or night. So expect a big increase in Joker's HP and SP over time. Once I come home, Sajiro gives me the keys, which means I can finally start training in the gym. Thanks, Sajiro. However, if you did not get rank 1 with Sajiro, the game will force you to bond with Sajiro to start rank 1 of the Hierophant Arcana. This worried me at first, but apparently you don't get any kindness for starting rank 1, so there's no loss here. On the 7th, we get introduced to Mementos, steal the heart of Nakanahora... Nakanahora, Nakanahora, Naka, Nakanahora, Horaka, Nakanahora grind because I'm low on money, and we get introduced to the best addition to Mementos, and we head back to get rank 2 with Mishima on the next day. From here, we either bond with Ryuji or train in the gym with Moist Protein. And then, there's two particular nighttime confidants that unfortunately we can't bond with. By visiting the airsoft, we can gain a gun with a status ailment, which is useful for getting technical damage. The reason this will be the only status ailment gun we will get from the airsoft shop is because, in order to start a confidant with the get-go, we need level 4 guts. So sadly, the hangman confidant is a no-go. And then we have Taranisuke Yoshida of the Sun Arcana. Yoshida has some very useful negotiation perks, however, there are two big problems. One, we will need to work at the beef bowl shop twice to get Yoshida, which means we will have to get proficiency for working. This is bad since we need room to craft another set of infiltration tools later in the game. And on top of that, Yoshida gives us points in charm, so bonding with him in general is just a bad idea. So, Yoshida the Sun Arcana is unfortunately a no-go as well. And it's probably for the best because no good ever comes out of talking to an old man about politics. Once it's the 10th, it will be the last day before exams. And since we have no confidants and the air is full of pollen, we will complete Mashima's mementos request, the bark and bite of a bully. The reason we're doing it now is so we can get Mashima's third rank ability. The run in mementos goes smooth, and since pollen season puts some shadows asleep, it will make the run easier. We collect all 10 stamps, raise our buffs, buy some SP recovery items, and face up against the bully who one shot killed me with a lucky punch. Surprisingly this guy put up quite a fight as he seems resistant to status ailments, but I won with the party standing and got a free Thana protein. Back in the real world we do our exams and thankfully we have nothing to worry about. Whether or not we get the questions wrong or every single question right doesn't even matter. The point of exams is to either get two notes of charm if you rank above average, or three notes of charm if you are in the top 10. However, even if we got every single question right, we will always be below average because the level of knowledge also plays a part in where your score is. 
Since we are at level 1 knowledge, it's actually impossible for us to get anything out of the exams, so there's no fear in getting the questions right or wrong. May 13th, we get introduced to the snack man himself, Dr. Maruki. And on this exact day, we get two ranks with him under the Counselor Arcana and the Detox X ability. Maruki has some very overpowered abilities to help Joker in combat, and he provides a 5 SP increase and a snack against status ailments. Dr. Maruki is also required in order to unlock the third semester, so we will definitely be maxing out his confidant since no social stats are required for any rank. The next day, On gets stalked by a gay European who is confused about his sexuality, so instead, he invites us to his sensei's art exhibit, but once we discover that his sensei has a palace of his own, our palace phobia kicks in and we immediately assume he's a bad guy. We can start infiltrating Madarame's palace as early as May 18th, which is highly recommended as you can get the Temperance Confidant sooner. However, we're going to make sure that we gain three specific Confidant abilities before we jump into the palace. Mashima's third rank in order to get another Mementos request and the ability to gain more experience points. Maruki's third rank to gain the Flow ability with a chance to start a battle with Charge and Concentrate, doubling Joker's attack power. And as for Ryuji, his seventh rank can only be initiated on specific days at night through text messaging. And most internet sources will tell you that the only days available in May is the 25th and 27th. However, I was able to get this interaction as early as May 18th. With Ryuji's seventh rank perk, we get the Insta-Kill, an overpowered skill that can reduce the amount of grinding and challenge. With the lack of confidant abilities, this will help us out a ton. We also start Caroline and Justine's confidant, and for the sake of time, I won't be covering how I completed every request. On the 21st, we infiltrate the palace, capture the treasure demon regent, and get stopped by a barrier that Joker's grapplet hook could have easily have overcome. Before returning to reality, we grind on the enemies until Joker is at level 18. Here, we fuse Slime and Regen to make Shikyoji. Shikyoji will be our new best persona as he has four nullifications including physical, and only one weakness which we can deal with once we get a skill card that nullifies Nuke. We also do our first challenge battle, which is the only part available to people who haven't downloaded the DLC. Here, we need On to use Garu to rank up points. Thankfully, I was able to get all three chests before the second round even started. We need the Ember Rain for Ryuji, the Duke's Coat to upgrade our defense, and the Copper Lum just to sell for Yen. We return back to the real world where we get on to pose nude for Yusuke, and we have a guard captain to fight with only Joker and Ryuji. Its weakness is fire, which is why we got the Ember Rain from the challenge battle. Later, on takes Yusuke into the metaverse to show off her tight rubbery suit. But Yusuke gets very embarrassed by his sensei when he finds out about his rubber fetish. Yusuke's awakening battle is simple in the fact that the bird dudes can go down easy with ice. But the blacksmith will not only take a while, but he can also one hit kill Yusuke who's only at level 15. We return back to finish the rest of Madarami's palace with Yusuke, blue skidoo into some paintings, capture new personas, and for the most part, there was no issues until I got up to the mini boss guarding the third will seed. The Awakened God is weak to wind and nuke, but he can brainwash all party members so we end up attacking each other. He will also do strong physical attacks, and he has Psychokinesis which can do technical against Brainwash. Because of this, pretty much all my party members died and I was running low on revival items, so I ended up dying on the first fight. The second fight went a lot better knowing what to expect, but it was still pretty brutal. As long as you plan your moves right and use Nuke and Wind, you can get through this mini boss fight on Merciless, and gain the third Will Seed. Back in the real world, we get Dr. Maruki up to rank 5, which means we won't be able to bond with him until sometime after the summer break. We send the calling card to Madarame, and I get Dodge Nuke with Shikiyoji after putting him in lockdown. And now, we are ready to face up against Madarame. I decided to go with the boys since An will not be able to gain any perks from her confidant. Once Madarame reveals that the Sayuri is painted by Yusuke's mom and that her death is caused by negligent homicide, 
Yusuke vows to paint Madarame red with his blood. And wow, what can I say about Madarame? This fight is very brutal on Merciless. Madarame has four different pieces of paintings that will do magic attacks, magic buffs, the mouth doing physical, and the worst part is that if he gets anyone's weakness, it will be an instant kill. Thanks to Shikiyoji, we have a better chance, but the chances of surviving the first phase is pure luck. The best strategy to figure out how to take down the paintings is to use multi-hit attacks, and for every attack that will hit, one or two paintings will drain attacks. And even if we manage to get a painting down, another painting will regenerate it, and over time, Madarame will cover one of our party members in black paint, which means we will be weak to all affinities. In other words, instant death. It doesn't help that the only revival items I have can only bring back 50% of health, because I'm only just bringing back my party members only for them to get knocked down again. This fight was so unbearable that I couldn't do it. And the one thing I didn't know is that apparently you can use the black paint on Madarame himself in order to make him weak to all affinities, but I couldn't see what that was like as Joker ended up going down. The second attempt was still pretty hard, but with better tactics and luck, I managed to get through it. And then we get to the second phase where Madarame creates four elemental fakes of himself. And this second phase is a cakewalk. This fight is heavily relying on the baton pass, and since exploiting the weaknesses will instant kill the fakes, your best strategy is to kill the fakes first and attack Madarame with a second or third baton pass stage. It's Honestly impossible to screw up this fight without even trying. Once Madarame finally goes down, Yusuke goes all Man of Steel and snaps Madarame's neck off screen. On the 30th, we are forced into cleaning up everyone's trash as an apology for being abused by a PE teacher. And we start the Faith Arcana with the royal exclusive character, Kasume Yoshizawa. A name that we first find out through the ID she dropped accidentally. This will actually be an important plot detail, which is the only reason I mention it now. The next day, Ryuji assumes that every guy in the world is straight and pressures Joker into doing the Operation Maid Watch event. This event leads to one of the best confidants in the game, which is why people recommend you to complete Madarame's palace as soon as possible. Obviously, I'm doing this much later because there's a downside to this confidant. Now, we kind of have no choice but to do this event as it will lock us out of being able to bond with Mishima. But on the upside, I was able to deepen my bond with Ryuji during this event, so I can't say that this was a complete waste of time. What is a waste of time, however, is the fact that we can't bond with Kawakami, who turns out to be the maid. I mean, you can go as far as in getting her phone number and all that, but the problem is that Joker will be unable to start a confidant with her unless his guts is at level 3. Some of you might see this as a major downside considering the fact that she helps save a lot of time at night and is able to craft infiltration tools and make coffee without us gaining any social stats. However, not having her as a confidant is actually a blessing in disguise. The reason being is because her ability to allow you to slack off in class will run the risk of us gaining social stats as there's no way out of it. The only way we can avoid gaining social stats is by reading hangout spots, but only if we're able to gain like 14 of them, which I don't even know if there's that much in the game. But not that that matters anyway, considering the fact that we can't even start a confidant with her to begin with. So unfortunately, best teacher of the Temperance Arcana is completely out of the question. So after buying more moist protein, training in the gym, and spending time with confidants such as Ryuji and... Ryuji, Madarame confesses to his crimes of only being able to scribble, and we unlock Kichijoji, a very useful royal exclusive edition where we can only use half of what it has to offer. Anyway, here we will automatically gain a baton pass rank 2 for both Joker and Ryuji, and for the most part, I think that's as far as we will go with the darts and baton pass levels, since playing darts runs the risk of us gaining points and proficiency. And bear in mind, we already have 3 points in proficiency after doing our tutorial for crafting a lockpick, and we need that open window to be able to craft another set of infiltration tools later in the run. 
So if we do play darts, it will probably be to max out Joker and Ryuji's baton pass at the least. But for now, they will be the only party members with an increase in damage and HP recovery. In the evening, however, I do spend time playing billiards as a means of increasing my technical rank. Playing billiards can increase any of your social stats with the exception of kindness, so the least riskiest one to rank up would be our guts, meaning we are now at 5 points of guts. The next day on the 6th is a rainy day, so of course I go buy Athena Moist Protein, however there are also two other useful items unlocked at the sports store. We can now finally buy a bottle of imported protein, which has greater effects on our training than Moist Protein, and can only be bought once a month. And since we played Billiards, we also unlocked the Export Billiards book, which is required in order to unlock our technical rank and get to rank 2 the next time we play Billiards. On June 7th, we infiltrate Mementos on a rainy day with four different Mementos requests, three of them which are given to you by Mishima, and the elderly one can be completed easily on a rainy day. I also fuse Phoenix with Counter, which is a request required to complete the fourth rank for Caroline and Justine, but this also gives us a persona with Medium Nuke, and the cheapest Faith persona to deepen our bond with Kasume, so we kill multiple birds with one birds with this fusion. After gaining all stamps available, I highly recommend investing your buffs into experience and money with a slight lean towards money before you complete your mementos requests. Once you get all stamps and mementos requests completed, make sure you level Joker up to 26 at the least and have more than 100,000 yen on you. Once those conditions are met, I return to the real world and unlock the technical rank by reading the Export Billiards book. Now, I don't know if having rank 1 technical damage actually increases our technical damage, but it has a plus sign on it, so let's assume it does. Hey everybody, intermission plug here again, but be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and ding the bell if you anticipate part 2 of this run. So are you ready for the Kaneshiro arc? Ready to get greedy? Alright, let's do the Kaneshiro arc. I get rank 5 with Mishima so backup members can earn more EXP. And thus begins the moment you've all been waited for, the extremely funny moment where a catchy thought he overheard one of us say, FIND THE COMPUTER ROOM! But our meeting turns out to be fate as a catchy has hearts in his eyes and offers me his phone number. Realizing this could be my chance to marry someone who can pay off my student loans instantly, I of course accept to go on a date with him and start rank 1 of the Justice Arcana. On June 13th, Makoto calls me in to ask me why I keep spending time with the boys over the girls. I try to tell her that it's because I'm doing a run where I lack social stats, but she doesn't believe me and the only way to not be the poster boy for Pride Month was to tell her that we are the Phantom Thieves. And so she offers us a third palace to do, except we have no name. As we go and find a name, we get no intel from Akechi other than get the sleuthing instinct at rank 2, which can sometimes reveal an enemy's affinity at the start of a battle. And we also go on a date with Yusuke and Mementos, unlocking the ability to plagiarize works of art, because clearly that works so well for Matarame. One night I go hang out with Ryuji in Shinjuku where a fortune teller tells Ryuji that he will be attacked by bad riding trying to cover up for bad riding. I get the name of our third target from Ichiko Oya, and later find Ryuji getting attacked by Bad Riding trying to cover up for Bad Riding. Makoto takes Alon in Kaneshiro's palace, and the pre-awakening fight against the Oni was tough. The Oni have strong physical attacks with no weaknesses, and after getting a crit, I ended up dying during this fight. And bear in mind, I already have Joker's hit points up to 701. The best strategy to get through this fight is to inflict them with status ailments like Brainwash, Forget, and Confused. You have to do two stages of this fight before you can proceed on, so this will take a while on Merciless. Once Makoto realizes how much homework really sucks, she awakens to Johanna, and thankfully, with the middle guy being weak to Nuke, this fight goes easier than just fighting two Onis. On June 21st, we have Chalk thrown at us, which of course we can dodge because what? Joker, you were supposed to give in to the abuse, not try to be charming. Yeah, one fact that I learned about dodging the chalk is that it's possible to dodge the chalk at level 1 proficiency. 
originally I thought you just had to be a high enough level, but no, apparently the proficiency increases your chances of dodging the chalk by a percentage, so thank god I saved beforehand so that way I don't have to repeat all those fights again, I mean, oh god. Just be wary that the chalk dodging events happens on these days, so be sure to save during the evening or otherwise you will have to repeat a whole ton of story again. Anyway, we max out our confidant with Ryuji, the only party member so far that is possible to max out without any social stats, so Ryuji upgrades Captain Kid, or downgrades him, into Satan Taisei. But on the upside, this gives Ryuji triple the evasion against his only weakness. With Ryuji being the only party member this early in the game with all of his confidant abilities, triple the evasion, and a baton pass rank 2, Ryuji will definitely stay in the front lines of battles as my most efficient party member. But alas, we are faced with another sad reality. The bookstore at Shijuku can offer us boosts or skills for certain daily activities, but since all activities end up giving us social stats, we will be gaining nothing from here. The reason why this sucks is because the ABCs of Crafted Book can double the amount of infiltration tools we make and is only available after we crafted an infiltration tool, and this does not include the lockpick from the tutorial way back in April, so we gotta manually craft infiltration tools just to get this damn book. And we're faced with another serious problem. We can no longer date a Kechi because we need level 3 charm and knowledge. This absolutely sucks. The reason it'd be in is because in order to access the Jazz Club, we have to get a Kechi's 4th rank. So this means we are unable to upgrade our party members throughout the entire game. No Sunday drinks for Futaba, and no stats increases. That means the only way we can upgrade our party members is through leveling up and equipment. So the only one that can gain hit points and spear points is Joker only through training. I'm sorry Akechi, I was really hoping we would bathe naked in the tub together. It, it would have been so romantic. But on the upside, there is one confidant that we can start, Jehea Mifun. I'm pretty sure someone's gonna say that I'm pronouncing her name wrong, but f**k y'all. Chehea actually requires no social stats throughout her entire confidant and doesn't give anyone bonding with her, so she will be the one we will be able to max out. We just gotta get through the long progress of starting her confidant while making sure we have more than 100,000 yen on us to pay for the phony stone. Sadly, the other confidant in Shinjuku, Ichiko Oya, cannot be bonded with. Or should I say, we can, it's just Oya increases our charm stat, similar to the problem with Yoshida, and it's bad enough that our charm is at a low threshold as is. The only major loss from not bonding with Oya is getting the bonus EXP burst when fusing Devil Personas, as her confidant abilities are the most worthless in the game. Not only would you have to suck so bad in order to increase the security level, but unlike the vanilla version, getting up to 100% doesn't kick you out of the palace. So even if this game was harder to stealth around in, which honestly it should have been harder to stealth around in, not having Oya's perks is really no loss. And just to rub holy stone salt in our wounds, we cannot raise our technical rank. While we were able to unlock it, doing the trick shot for rank 2 actually requires us to be at level 3 proficiency. I actually didn't even know that proficiency was a requirement to level up your technical rank till I did this run. So sadly, our technical rank is permanently locked in rank 1 for the rest of the game. So in the meantime, we just do more confidant interactions, train half naked to impress Akechi, gain a mementos request from Cheheya, get rank 6 with Mishima, and get the interaction with his shadow in mementos where I tell him that Atlas wants us to hate on him, and that we only bond with him for his confidant skills. And on June 30th, only 9 days left for Kanashiwa's Palace, which I haven't even started yet, we go into mementos on a rainy day and this actually brings us a very useful tip that I found out for myself. Since moist protein can only be bought once per day when it rains, the best time to go into the metaverse is during a rainy day. 
The reason being is because if you jump into the metaverse during a non-rainy afternoon, and it so happens to rain in the evening, we will not be able to get the moist protein as there's no way to leave the cafe. So by going into the metaverse during a rainy day, we can get the moist protein beforehand for that day, so if it happens to rain at night, we won't miss out on the moist protein. Anyway, we jump into mementos as a means to level up Makoto who's only at level 21, and to complete three mementos requests including the abusive boyfriend one to start Shiheya's confidant. We don't actually make any progress going down the floors, but on top of completing the mementos request, we finally get the Twin Warden's 5th rank ability, Special Treatment, which will allow us to fuse higher level personas earlier at the cost of thousands of yen, an extremely useful ability for more reasons than one. And after completing their 6th request for Nico Shogun, I itemized Nico Shogun so Morgana can have a status ailment gun to put enemies to sleep, a good advantage to get technical damage on an enemy since we lack the Hangman Confidant abilities, and so we can finally start Jahea's Confidant of the Fortune Arcana. And we were also able to get Mishima's 7th rank perk, which is the highest for EXP gain, so now only his max rank ability remains. Since it's July, we can gain one more thing of imported protein, but we can also get more protein on the home shopping program on July 3rd with the body building set. July 4th is a rainy day, so this will be the day that we finally infiltrate Kanashiro's palace with only 5 days remaining. Yeah, Joker must really love scaring his friends with his leadership. Now, there's really nothing to talk about when it comes to Kaneshiro's palace, other than how awesome this palace theme is, only for it to be dropped two-thirds into the palace. Midway bosses are easy to fight up against with good tactics, and once we have a full infiltration, the fusion alarm is finally unlocked for the Velvet Room. This will definitely help us in so many ways, including doubling the effects of incest when we put a persona in lockdown. There was no rainy day on the 5th, but it does rain on the 6th, so we send the calling card on this day because it's either now or the next day with our very small deadline. And so we go to steal the treasure on July 7th. After getting some extra treasure and treasure demons, we seal the deal and make this pig squeal. Kadashiro on Merciless does put up quite the challenge, but it's pretty manageable. Actually, one move I did not know existed till I did this run is that Pinkytron will actually turn around and fart on us. When this happens, we get inflicted with fear, giving us a high chance of not performing an action. The first phase is simple, but it still takes a while. The second phase is where it gets tricky as Kadashiro can perform a lullaby which will make all of us go to sleep and make us extremely vulnerable to most attacks. However, the only attacks are physical and gun based, so with Shiki Oji, this fight is impossible to lose as Joker. Yusuke has a 10% chance of reflecting physical damage with his counter skill, and Murgata has the best skills for healing up the party members, and Ryuji is our brute force party member with all confidant ability, so pretty self-explanatory. The best way to get through this fight is to use status ailments, as you need to inflict the shield guard in order to attack Kanashiro, and use a technical on him can speed up this fight. The only devastating move in this fight is when he rains money down on you. Once his guards leave due to a lack of money, make sure all party members are revived and standing, or otherwise they won't gain any EXP after battle. Once Kanashiro goes down, we scold him for being greedy over money, only for us two scenes later to get greedy over money. We get the lockpicking ability, more EXP Arcana Burst, and absolutely no confession cutscene with Kanashiro, which always bugged me. Great palace, but the man is quite a bland villain to be honest. Makoto calls to tell us that she stole our video games and won't bring them back unless we pass our exams. We start the Judgment Arcana with Sai Nijima, which is only story progressive and offers no perks, so not much to cover there. On July 10th, we are forced to study with our group no matter how much we try to avoid it. Thankfully, we gain no social stats from studying in this cutscene. And as we're talking, a mysterious overseer hears us and starts writing her fanfiction about the Phantom Thieves. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs>
And there you go guys, that was part one of the No Social Stat Run. If you would like to see the rest of this run, be sure to give it a like, comment, subscribe, and ding the bell for more. You can also check out my Let's Play for Persona 5 Royal, covering the first two months of the game, or check out my top 20 best confidants in Persona 5 Royal with 19 useful tips. Will Joker be able to get through life with low social quirks? Well, find out next time when I release part two. And now, the curtain falls.